an election year guaranteed to divide us. This is a debacle. Finally, a second term we can all agree on. Yes! Comedy Central's The Daily Show. Mondays with Jon Stewart. Tonight at 11, 10 Central on Comedy Central. And next day on Paramount+. Plus. Hi, I'm your inner dream monologue. And you're fast asleep, so I'll be quick. Great job using the Colgate Optic White Overnight Teeth Whitening Pen before bed. When used as directed, it gives you a visibly whiter smile in just seven days. So while I fly and talk to animals, you're removing teeth stains with ease. Sweet dreams. And when you wake up, keep on living life to the brightest. Colgate Optic White. Find it at all major retailers. We are back at Newport Beach, and this episode is called The Swells, and I thought it was swell. I gave it a three out of five stars in this particular circumstance. Uh, I did not like it as much as last week's episode, but I still liked it quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw a prediction out there early on. I said something where I said that they revealed the Dean Hest. They they revealed the Mm -hmm. out. Of Dean Hest, right? They mm-hmm. they showed that the Dean was doing something inappropriate. They said they don't reveal that hand without immediately leading to the expulsion of that character. Yep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I was mostly correct. By that same logic, Julie Cooper has found out that Charlotte is a scam artist at the end of this episode. And thus, I must predict that Charlotte will be gone by the time we record next. <laughs> <laughs> now, will I be right? I do not know, but that's that's my prediction just based on the scientific equation that I've crafted for the OC is that they do not let these things linger more than an episode. So, so here's the exit plan. We will now be taking the exit. Out the gate, I want to give a big compliment to this episode because it... Mm-hmm. It starts with Marissa having lingering trauma dreams from everything that happened at the end of season two. And I'm glad that they actually are not just like, well, Trey's gone and now all the problems are fixed. You know what I mean? Like that is like kind of what I expect the OC to do. Cause boy, do they just be like time has passed. So we've moved on with a lot of problems, but like what happened to Marissa would be something that had a PTSD situation lingering with her so i'm glad that they're not just like moving past it uh and they're actually using this is how you properly use plot beats to create genuine drama you Mm -hmm. know what i mean like i have no problem with the like weird situation with marissa and ryan and johnny i think it very naturally plays out of like Johnny having similar trauma and like that being, and there being this trauma bonding situation. And at this point in time, I still truly believe that for either one of them, it's, it's still fairly platonic. It's, it's, Hey, I have a lot in common with this person. I've gone through a lot of the same scars as this person. And thus we're really close. Um, I know that like one of my best friends is a former podcast host of mine, Brooke, who did like the Disneyto and the Roaring Twenties podcast. And, you know, when we go to parties, we kind of just isolate the two of us and catch up because we have a lot of the same like depression mm-hmm. and anxiety issues. So we're mm-hmm. able to like kind of trauma bond on that. Brooke's been on this show. Duh, I forgot about that. We have It's been so long since we had a guest. Um, <laughs> but I, I like that they dropped that piece in there. We get early on into the episode, uh, Seth and Summer are walking around school and Seth says, Ryan and Marissa haven't broken up in weeks. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> and it's just like a nice little thing. And then Summer's like, yeah, but I feel it coming. Like I feel, <laughs> I feel the, I feel no, the, it's coming y'all. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great way to like build that up. Um, now, as you informed me last week, 
and I learned this week, they may have gotten rid of Dean, mm -hmm. but the but the Taylor still still is there. Yes, Taylor is still there. So let me let's focus real quick on all of the adult stuff. Get that out of the way. And then try to dive into all because this is a teen heavy episode. This yeah. is very much focused on the teens. So what ultimately happens in this episode is I would say there's two giant plot beats. Mm -hmm. Plot beat number one is that these guys come in and they're going to be buying Caleb's old company. And as they're working out the deal, the the assistant to the guy who's making the purchase gives Sandy a look that makes Sandy concerned. So he mm -hmm. calls this guy into his office and they have a conversation. And basically this guy's just like, don't sell it to him. You should keep the company. Let me take care of it for you. Just hire me to manage it. Yeah. And like, think of all the good you could do having your ethics, but control of this giant thing. Yeah. Mm hmm. I want to believe that this person is genuine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've also learned that no one who isn't characters introduced in the first episode <laughs> of the OC are ever genuine. Yeah. Um, but I want to believe that this is, that this is going to work out mostly because I think that time and time again, it usually shows that Sandy has a good bullshit detector on this type of stuff. Hell, hence not, trusting the person that he was going to sell the place to in the first in the beginning yeah. um so i'm i'm intrigued but not very interested yeah. um it I, reminded me that of a pot point that i hate okay <laughs> which is sandy takes over the newport group okay <laughs> i hate this plot line i okay. hate it i hate it i hate it and that's all i will say because i think i've biased you enough <laughs> Well, I, I mean, it, so. it looks like all the plot lines that I've hated so far have ended, so it or are about to end. So it's time to open up more plot lines. <laughs> I did a little bit of googling on Charlotte accidentally. I was trying to figure out who the I was like, this actress looks familiar, and I can't place my finger on why I know her. From what I saw, it sounds like nobody, and I mean nobody, mm -hmm. who writes for the OC wanted this plot line. Like that the story from the creators of the OC is that they literally were just told this actress is going to do a six, a five to seven episode run, figure mm -hmm. it out, <laughs> make it something juicy. Cause we're trying to rope in the late twenties crowd to start watching the OC. And like all of the writers have been like, it was stupid. We hated it. There's no reason for this plot to exist whatsoever beyond yeah. we were told we had to. Which explains, I think, why it just keeps getting lazier and lazier with each episode. Like, you can literally feel the writers running out of steam on this storyline. Yeah, they're, that they're like, not we're into. done now. We yeah. Can we be done with this? And case in point, Julie Cooper uh, catches on to the scheme. She, she does a interesting move where she's just like hey my friends said they were going to treat let me just go through their pocketbook and use one of their credit cards which like i <laughs> fully love that is some like that is that's not a white people problem that is a like white people privilege right yeah. it's just like oh i'm just my friend was treating so i'm just gonna put it down for her i'm just gonna <laughs> i'm gonna make it easier for her let me go rifle through her things also it's not even like this person's not even a friend this is someone who she like just met. Who I mean, they do live together now, but yeah, but like still, it's someone who she just met. Like, I would you rifle through your roommate's shit? I wouldn't a... even rifle through my girlfriend's shit. Like, I wouldn't <laughs> like I wouldn't rifle through. I don't want to rifle through anybody's shit. Like, people's stuff is their private shit. People's shit is their shit. <laughs> exactly. But I mean, that's really all that happens with the adults in this one is that they set up that Sandy's going to buy the Newport group or mm -hmm. Sandy's going to keep and run the Newport group. And they set up that Julie Cooper has caught on to what Charlotte is up on. Um, their, their ask is that to get Julie back into the public eye, they're going to do a charity event. Um, and they want Kirsten to help with that. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm, there mm -hmm. we go. So 
back to the teens. Another unrealistic story beat for me. Sure. Is that Taylor has organized a mandatory overnight event at the school. There is no world where it is mandatory for you to stay overnight at a high high school. school. Not even really at a college. There's no such. Now, if you signed up for a club, I could see (laughs) maybe there being like a mandatory trip with the club. But just Mm -hmm. by the sheer act of being a senior in high school that you have to do a lock in like insanity. Absolute insanity would never fucking happen. That being said, I like what happens throughout this episode. <laughs> ignoring <laughs> ignoring that stupid conceit. Like, I like what's happening. I do have a big question. Okay. So Sandy and Summer and Seth go through mm-hmm. all this trouble to entrap the Dean. Mm-hmm. And they don't also ask for him to take away Marissa's expulsion. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's a little different, right? Because How is it a little different. He made the decision of the expulsion of both of the students. Yeah, and but like Ryan, Ryan did something way worse. He punched a faculty member. Well, hold on. Okay, hold on. Ryan punched a faculty member. Marissa shot someone <laughs> in self defense. <laughs> we haven't had a trial yet. We don't know. Is there going to be a trial? Because I'll I'll watch. The I don't trial. think there's a trial. Oh, I, I mean, it's the OC, right? So like, I think she's just going to get away with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Trey left, so I guess open. Yeah, exactly. There's no victim. On. It's a victimless crime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was just some scumbag from Chino. No one of importance. Yeah, no one gives hurt. a shit. No one gives a shit about him. Dear God. But yeah, I was like, why is Marissa still at this school? But whatever. She's still there for the drama. The line of the episode for me is they're having this dinner mm-hmm, at the Cohen's, mm-hmm. and Summer shows up and tells Ryan that Marissa's not gonna be there because she's surfing with Johnny. <laughs> And Ryan stares at Summer for a couple of seconds. And then Seth very calmly goes, Ryan, please try not to punch Summer. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah. Now, the what I didn't anticipate was that it would be Casey who becomes the jealous person. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So Casey becomes jealous. And we meet yet another anonymously evil teen <laughs> who's poking at Casey's jealousy. Mm-hmm. saying hey i thought you were the one dating johnny because it certainly doesn't look like it to me and it's like <laughs> and it's just oh that's right volchok <laughs> volchok um which <laughs> i made a realization chili reminds me of somebody <gasps> chili yeah. reminds me of evil ed from the original fright night movie <laughs> he's got the crazy hair uh, yeah. the obnoxious <laughs> personality <laughs> skateboards like it's just <laughs> he's got the skateboard he's got the skateboard he's got all of it um so there that's that's happening in the marissa world we have to keep jumping back and forth because there's all these things happening uh throughout it um then back at the summer seth ryan situation mm-hmm. they kind of start to make you sympathize a little bit with taylor mm-hmm. right you meet her mom you at least in some way empathize with why she is the way that she is. Yeah. Like she's clearly this very smart, brilliant student and her mom can't stand that about her. And it's, it's a, it's a sad scene to watch. It really this is, is her like, villain origin story. Yeah. Which I is mean, what Dean <laughs> don't have. Exploit it. Yeah. With Dean has. Yeah. And it, but it, it did make me sympathize with her. I said, okay, I get it. You've at least made me understand why she does these things and I can like empathize with what's happening. Yeah. Right. Summer is at this party. She goes with Marissa and Johnny. Cause she's like, I just want to see this for myself so I can see that this is just a fully platonic thing. She does not see something that seems fully platonic panics calls Seth and tells Seth that Ryan should get to this party right away. Um, 
And, you know, even though nothing really happens for most of the party, Mm -hmm. my anxiety was like, it wasn't when he was there during the day, but when like sundown had occurred, I was like, oh no, oh no, they're still there. It's nighttime. Summer and Ryan are going to miss the lock-in, the top priority of Newport. (laughs) But this is where Johnny catches Casey cheating. She, She hurts him before he can hurt her is the way that Summer explains it. Yeah. Um, This leads to Johnny wanting to pull a Ryan, but Johnny is no Ryan in this circumstance. Mm -hmm. Uh, So Ryan has to step in and be a Ryan. This is where, once again, Volchek, we we meet this anonymous, evil, psychopathic teen Mm -hmm. who seems like he is ready to just kill all of these teenagers. And this is when when something clicked in my head. If mm-hmm. this show played out exactly the same way, but with like a way more knowing wink and nod to the audience, I think sure. I'd love it. But I, I, I can tell that this is sincere, that they're doing sincere storytelling. And that I think is what's frustrating me because a lot of this feels like parody more than it feels like mm. something real. And that's where like, I think my enjoyment is going up because I'm just choosing to watch it as parody sure. at this point. Yeah. Like I'm just like, you know what? If this show's not going to take itself seriously, what should I am I am I watching? Yeah. Um, but I do love the end of this episode. Ryan and Summer are just a couple minutes late to the lock-in. Everyone is harassing Taylor. Seth steps up and she asks him why he's doing it. And he goes, because I'm used to this. I have thicker skin. Don't worry about it. Yeah. And he kind of handles things. And the two of them start to become close. And Taylor pretends that she can't hear Summer and Ryan asking to be let in to mm-hmm. lock in. Because now Taylor, she's she's over the Dean. And now she wants to co-in. <laughs> um, Matt, I have never heard of a lock-in before this episode of the OC. Oh, I mean, I know of church lock-ins. What is that? (laughs) Literally, so it's kind of what she's trying to do. A a church lock-in is for for the night we're locking up the building. You can't leave the building. You have full reign of the building to do whatever you want. But it's kind of like a team. It's a lot of team building exercises and stuff like that. Um, Ironically... The last time my church had a lock-in, uh, they accidentally started a fire and burned down half the sanctuary and had to unlock the doors and call the fire department. Uh, so now we don't do lock-ins at the church anymore. Um, so that was fun. Uh, uh, what? <laughs> yeah, I wasn't there for that, but I heard about it after the wor- afterwards. Um, and then the only thing that comes close to this that where I was locked in at my school... And even then, I don't know if it was fully locked in where we couldn't leave, but I'm pretty sure it was, Mm -hmm. was my school had, um, after senior prom, there was post-prom. I'm not sure Mm -hmm. if you had a post-prom, but it was like the parents went all out. We went back to the school afterwards, and it was like door prizes. Like, I won a mini fridge. Like, it was like stuff that you could use for college, basically, that they did a raffle with. It was like you get kids to not like go have sex and pretty do much. Drugs yeah. But it was like, it was like fully catered food all night long. It was literally from midnight until six in the morning. They had like inflatables, karaoke, like video games, dance, dance revolution. Like we're talking 2004, like sure. exciting mm-hmm. things that were exciting in 2004. I need to find some pictures of it though, because they literally, the parents did an amazing job where we left the school that day. And by the time we came back at midnight, the school looked completely different because I went to my senior year. And then the next year I was asked to go to senior prom with a friend of mine who I went to their junior prom. And my senior year, the theme was uh, around the world. And it was literally like they filled the lobby with sand and built a boardwalk that you walked across in the lobby. And then like you went into this other area and they built it to look literally Damn. like you were in like Europe. And then like another area was built to like, it was insane. Her year was a night at the, mo- uh, the, a night at the movies. And they literally had a limo parked outside the school. And the entrance to the school was a giant red carpet. 
and they had all of the parents there taking photos and you would walk, you and your date would walk through the limo and out to the red carpet and they would like snap the photos of you walking up the red carpet into the school and then every room was themed after like famous movies. They literally built Hogwarts for the cafeteria and like used fishing line to have candles hanging like throughout wow. the building. But they also took one of the pillars and like made it so the pillar was spreading apart and they had the like platform th nine and three fours. This and is then so much. There is so much so, happening. It's so extra. But they literally like my mom worked on it for years because she had four kids. So she did all the different senior year. She was part of that committee. And basically the secret was that they had a giant storage unit where after every one of those, they would store all of the stuff in there. So if someone years later was like, oh, we need a volcano. And there was one from like my year that they had like a fake volcano. They could they they had access to all these props. So every year it got bigger and better with what was already there and building right. around it. Um, but yeah, it was really, I mean, it was really, 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 really cool. So uh, it became a thing where like m most kids would go because they yeah. wanted to see what they were doing. Yeah. It wasn't lit like I still every year drive by the school, the, the day of prom just to see what the outside looks like. Cause mm -hmm. they, I mean, the coolest one ever was they did a book. Uh, it was just about books. And it was literally the entire front of the school. Mm -hmm. They made a giant bookshelf and they had these giant like 10 foot book covers across the entire front of the school. And then the entrance was an opened book that you would like walk through to like go into the school. It was. And after they do it, since it's like two weeks before the end of the year, they just leave it up for the rest of the year. Um, so it's yeah. really, really cool. Like it's like, oh, this is awesome. Um, the other thing that they, we did that was like a lock in situation was for whatever reason volleyball was huge at our school like that was mm -hmm. like the gym the gym activity that everyone loved so we would do a volley an all night long volleyball marathon where you would form your team of like nine nine people and you would sleep in the school and they had like four nets set up so they were doing you know four games at once and then they would just let you know like like you just had to have someone awake to wake up the rest of the team when it was time for one of your matches. Sure. And then, you know, when you lose, like, and you're out of the tournament, then you just sleep until it's time to go home. But I mean, that was, that was fun. I, I would have, I would in my thirties, almost forties, I would do an all night volleyball marathon again. Cause I like, that was just fun. Hi, I'm your inner dream monologue and you're fast asleep. So I'll be quick. Great job using the Colgate Optic White Overnight Teeth Whitening Pen before bed. When used as directed, it gives you a visibly whiter smile in just seven days. So while I fly and talk to animals, you're removing teeth stains with ease. Sweet dreams. And when you wake up, keep on living life to the brightest. Colgate Optic White. Find it at all major retailers. You've been lost in the woods for hours now, stumbling around in the dark. You come around the bend and see two people roasting marshmallows over a roaring fire. They see you coming into the clearing and gesture over to pull up a log. Welcome to Campfire Ashes. I'm Paul. And I'm Jess. Join us as we tell each other our originally written spooky stories around the campfire and then dive into the lore and legends that inspired them. Is it something that goes bump in the night? Is it something menacing lurking past the tree line? Or is it just weird and otherworldly? You'll find it here on Campfire Ashes. You can find us on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, or right here on the Geekscape Network. Joe, let's talk about the music because it's another <laughs> kind of weak-ass week. Mm -hmm. So almost all of the music is tied to the party. Um, Ryan shows back up at school and we hear the song Publish My Love by Rogue Wave. Uh, when Ryan shows up at the party, Pennywise Knocked Down, Knocked Down is playing. And later on at the party... No Rest for the Weekend by Orange is playing. Um, Joe, I know that these are all just iconic, uh, ear-catchy songs. Wh which one did you go with? Or are you pulling um, your Phantom Planet California card on this one? I, I have to do it for... I, I, I'm sorry, but like these two episodes had nothing... I know there was music, but it was nothing <laughs> memorable. I'm doing Phantom Planet on this one because... like. There was also just like I was I was a little too into the plot and I almost went on like I'm trying to also watch them in chunks right when we yeah. do it and I almost went on 
but no th- this is this is not a memorable one for me this is this is a phantom planet situation which what? like to me i hope that means that in the next couple episodes we're going to get some really nice eel drops i think episode i was looking at my notes from the last couple of weeks i think episode 2 is really what killed us cuz that was death cab and franz ferdinand and phantom mm-hmm. planet all in one episode so i'm sure they spent a lot on that one <laughs> and mm-hmm. now they're trying mm-hmm. to make up for it um i put down pennywise they're a band that i i never loved but i liked the band pennywise sure. so i was like oh shit pennywise it's like it it made me acknowledge a band while watching it yeah. so there's that um pop culture stuff real quick uh, I've mentioned this book a thousand times. It was my favorite book of 2023. Uh, mm-hmm. It's by Kirsten White, and it's called Mr. Magic. Uh, and it's a nice little horror fantasy novel. Uh, it's about a fictional TV show called Mr. Magic that aired sometime in the late 80s, early 90s. And everybody remembers watching it, but no one can find any clips of it anywhere on the internet. It seems to have been completely wiped away. Also, people can't remember what Mr. Magic looked like. They don't remember a lot of the details about the show. All that they remember was that something really tragic happened during the last episode that, like, scarred a whole generation of kids. But no one can agree on what that was. And the book is about someone doing a podcast, bringing back the kids from the Mr. Magic show to talk about it. And you're following all of these former child stars as they're going to do this podcast interview and you realize that they also have no recollection of doing this show and are trying to remember this like giant missing part of their childhood. Uh, It does a great job of having a nice intriguing mystery for the entire Mm -hmm. thing. It really is fun to read. If you grew up on that eighties, nineties, like very cheap, kids show type sure. entertainment they they really capture the vibe of that uh and it is worth noting that kirsten white was part of the mormon church and left the mormon church and she in the uh after they you know the post script of the book says this should shock no one that most of this was bro- based around my experiences growing up with mormon teaching um so it's it's a very interesting fun twisty turny book i really hope that it becomes a movie one day like i was like Mm. reading it being like oh i want the movie version of this like yesterday like i it was one of those way back in the day i used to read a stephen king book and then immediately rent the movie and like watch it with the book fresh in my head and i actually felt bummed that there wasn't a movie that i could watch with all of it fresh in my head because i was like i think visually this could be amazing Um, But yeah, so check that out. I think it was low-key the best book of 2023. And now, Joe, take us home. So Matt, I'm very excited for this year because I have um, actually written down a bunch of my... um, uh, Like, I actually have New Year's resolutions or New Year's goals uh, this year. And it's so interesting because I don't usually do this. Like, I don't usually write, like, New Year's resolutions. I don't know what it is. I think I've just managed to, like, gaslight myself into thinking that that's been, um, (laughs) that's been something that I don't want to do. But one of those New Year's resolutions is to, like, go to the movies more. And so the other day, I was, like, I, like, was laying in bed, flipping through, like, trailers for movies that are coming out in, in 2024. And... I saw a trailer for a film that I'm like really, really excited for. And that's kind of what I'm obsessed about with right now. And so excited that like, I'm not going to go research more beyond the trailer because I don't want to be, I don't want to know and I don't want to be spoiled. So here's what I'm going to say before you say anything. Mm -hmm. I went and saw the beekeeper (laughs) yesterday. (laughs) Oh my God. My parents really want to see the beekeeper. And there was a trailer that played before The Beekeeper Mm -hmm. that I was like, how have I not known that this movie's coming? And I had a a very excited, like, similar to what you're describing. So I'm curious if you're about to say the movie that I'm thinking. We'll see. Uh, So the trailer that I watched was for Lisa Frankenstein. Oh, nope. That was the that was when I saw Night Swim. Yes, this movie looks amazing. (laughs) 
Yeah, Lisa Frankenstein, which is written by Diablo Cody. Is it directed by her too? I don't think she directs too much, but I do know she definitely wrote it. So Lisa Frankenstein, it takes place in the 80s. It stars Catherine Newton from Freaky, from fucking Marvel, um, and Cole Sprouse of like, you know, Riverdale and Zack and Cody and... It just looks, it looks like so much fun. Also, I'm so happy that like we are paying (laughs) Diablo Cody for work again. And like, I was talking to Joshua about this the other day because I was telling him like, oh my God, Lisa Frankenstein looks so cool. It it was, um, it was, it gave a little bit of reference to Edward Scissorhands. Yep. No, that's exactly what I compared it to. We actually just... We talked about this a little bit on horror movie night because we were saying, what is this? There's this weird aesthetic that I can't put my finger on, but it's like super bright colors, 1950s vibes to it, but like with horror Mm -hmm. (laughs) and like Lisa Frankenstein and Edward Scissorhands were the two movies that we were using as like ways to pinpoint what we were talking about. I got to say, though, that I'm really looking forward to it. And there's some other films that I'm really looking forward to. But I'm pretty um, sure that when this episode comes out, Lisa Frankenstein is now in theaters. Oh, we will see. Hey, what was the what was the movie that you were looking forward to from the I, Keeper? I was not aware of the existence of Abigail. Um, The new film from the director of Ready or Not and Scream 6. And it's like these mercenaries, this this little girl is, this ballerina is kidnapped and she's Uh like tied up in a room. And the people who kidnapped her have like these seven armed mercenaries in the house and is basically just like, oh my God, (laughs) they're like, you just have to make sure that nothing happens to her tonight. And then you'll each receive like your pay. And then the one is bonding with the little girl and the little girl's like, I'm really sorry. And she's like, for what? She's like, for what's going to happen to you tonight. And then the doors close and the sun goes down. And then next thing you know, someone just screams, she's a fucking vampire ballerina. And then it's just all this crazy (laughs) shit of this, this vampire creature in a tutu, just doing ballerina shit while killing people inside this house. And I was like, well, I'm going to watch the fuck out of this movie. Oh, this my God. Hold amazing. on. Put it, I'm, I'm starting the <laughs> note right now. 2024 movies. I'm putting Abigail. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Joe, I'm right there with you. I have a I have a full list of all the stuff coming out in 2024 that I'm going to try to make it my point to see. Um, but in the meantime, we're going to see what happens with the folks in Newport Beach next week on White People Problems. You're so dumb. listening to the Geekscape Network.